Hey, this is Marcos with Future Studio University. In this video, we will set up our Happy View configuration to use Handlebars Helpers. And the Handlebars Helpers will then be available in our views. To illustrate the implementation, we will use the Future Flick Starter Kit. I will tell you more about the Future Flick Starter Kit at the end of this video. For now, we will just go ahead and configure the Handlebars Helpers. And we will do that within the server.js file, which is the entry point for this happy project. Within the server.js, you can see there is a views path configuration and already a server views configuration, which uses a path for the individual view files, a layout, a default layout, and the partials, which we configured in the previous videos. So if you're interested in that, just check them out. I've linked them below. You can just follow the links. The task in this video for you and me is to configure the handlebars helpers. And let's do that. Just pick up the helpers path and point it to a directory in your project where all your helper files are located. So we will resolve the directory within the views path and then use the helpers folder. No, comma. You may wonder why we put the helpers into the views path. And well, actually the helper files aren't view files, but we will use them within the views. So ultimately you will, they are closely related to views and that's why we put them in there. Okay, the views path is a variable over here. I've mentioned that in the beginning, it points to a directory from this directory, public and views, and let's go, here's the server.js file, public and views. And in here, there's no helpers folder. So we need to create that first. All right. And all the helper files, which we will put in the helpers folder, will be picked up by happy when the service starts. So I will tell you more about picking up the helpers in a second. For now, let's switch over to Chrome. And I've already started the Future Flick start page on my local machine. I need to show you that I'm running a supervisor process in the background. Let me just scroll down. And the server started or the server restarts on every change within handlebars files or JavaScript files. We just changed the server.js file and therefore the happy process need to be restarted. And there are a lot of errors because we didn't create the helpers directory first, but just after some talking. Okay, back to Chrome and then let's go into a movie. Let's take Moana and over here, there's the runtime of this movie in minutes. So it's 107 minutes and Intuitively, it's hard for me to understand what is it. So I prefer the format of hours and minutes. And that's what we will configure and create a handlebars helpers for. Okay, let's switch over to Visual Studio Code again and create a helper called format runtime. And you can see that I'm named the file format runtime.js because handlebars helpers are JavaScript files and Node.js modules. That means you need to module exports a function from your helpers file that accepts parameters, of course. And we will just use an error function. And in there, you put all your logic and outputs. So let's say we, if runtime isn't specified or the runtime isn't greater than zero, just return an empty string. The actual functionality is we want to output a string in the format. Let me just print it like ours in and minutes. Yeah. Okay. So at this point we don't have the variables for hours and minutes, but we will create that in a second. So that's the desired output we want to show for each movie. Okay. Let's create the variables for hours, which is, let's take math floor. It's the runtime divided by 60 and minutes are the rest, which means the runtime 
modulo 60. Okay, that's the handlebars helpers which ultimately formats our runtime. The format runtime helper is available in your views because when starting your happy server, happy picks up all the JavaScript and helper files within the helpers folder and it assigns a helper's name based on the file name. That means we will have the format runtime helper available in our views. So let's switch over to the view file where the, let me see, here it is. So we want to change the runtime in minutes. That's shitty. And we want to format the runtime based on the current runtime. All right, that's our desired action. Let's switch to Chrome and see if everything changed. All right, that's what we want. So it's easier to understand that the movie is, has a duration of one hour and 47 minutes instead of 107 minutes, which is hard to grasp. So this is really nice. Okay, let's switch back to Visual Studio and I wanna tell you more about these type of helpers. The format runtime helper is a content helper, which is just the keyword or the helper's name and then passing in the desired arguments. There are also block helpers in handlebars and you know them from statements like if. So we have if the runtime is available, runtime is available and else that's not available. And you're specifying statement like this. Let me just fix this one. Okay, so just switching to Chrome would give us the runtime and then runtime is available. So let's just check that. So you can see this random output that the runtime is available. And what we want to create now is a content helper that tells us if we should take popcorn and Coke into the movie or just going with popcorn because the two liter Coke bottle is just too large for us to drink within the short amount of time. So let's say we have the runtime. Let's make it look nice with another bullet over here. And then we want to create a take food helper based on the runtime and the take food helper should output take popcorn and coke sorry geeky else just go with popcorn and that's nice so at this point the take food helper isn't available because it's not a default handlebars helper and we need to create that. So let's go for it. Create a new helper, take food.js again. You know, you need to model exports it. We take the runtime as an argument. And again, let's just copy that part over here. What we are interested in is how is it possible to specify the handlebars helper that switches between two blocks. Like, how is it possible to go into the first block and how is it possible to go into the other block? So let's say we want to switch into the else block if there's no runtime available, because we can calculate it. It's because you need to specify another parameter, which is called options. And from here, you go options inverse from this. Next. Let's say the runtime is greater than 120 minutes, which indicates two hours. We want to take popcorn and Coke, and we need to Fn of this. And that means the option parameter is passed from handlebars. It will be available, even though you don't pass it from, from here. It's passed in from handlebars and you have access to it. So if there's no runtime available, if there's no runtime available for a movie, let's say we have a null value in the sample data, we want to switch over here and just go with popcorn because we don't know it, but just take popcorn with you. If the runtime is greater than 120 minutes, you could also calculate the two hours again. 
we want to go with popcorn and coke and in case it's not greater than 120 minutes we want to default back to just popcorn okay let's check if it's working let's reload okay we run into an issue let's go to item and yeah, I need to restart the server because it crashed due to the missing helper. Reload again, and there you go. Well, that's what we're interested in. Because the movie is lower than two hours, you can just go with popcorn, it's fine. You will endure the 100 and what is it, seven minutes? And yeah, that's fine. So let's go back and see if there's another movie which might be over two hours. It's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So there you go, there you can see the take popcorn and coke is the helper which only comes when the movie is longer than two hours. And going for Morana again, it's just go with popcorn. And here, take popcorn and coke. And remember it's options.inverse to jump into the else block and options.fn for the first part. Okay, actually that's it. Let's shortly recap what you have learned in this video. We started out with the views configuration for your happy server and added the helpers path which points to a directory in your project that contains all the helper files. We specified the helpers folder within the views over here and within the helpers folder, Happy picks up every helper file like take food or format runtime and makes each file available in your views. So it picks up each file, takes the file name and makes the helpers file available based on the file name in your views. So the take food helper is a block helper because you're using the options parameter and options inverse or options fn of this to indicate that a specific helper is true or false. And there's a block helper, the format runtime helper, which is a content helper that outputs a given string for us. It calculates the runtime based on the minutes and outputs it in the format of hours and minutes. And within your view files, you can use content helpers without the hashtag or without the hash and the block helpers require a hash. And if you're using a block helper, make sure it ends with a forward slash and the helpers name to indicate that the block is ended. Or you will run into an issue within the handlebars configuration that will tell you that it's not the end of a block or it, you, it can't find the end of the block. All right, we hope you learned a lot within this video and now you can configure handlebars helpers within your project, make use of handlebars helpers to output custom strings and yeah, just make sure you use them for good. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on Happy. And now I want to tell you more about the FutureFlix starter kit. FutureFlix is a sample app that we will implement over the next couple of weeks in the Learn Happy learning path. Go to learnhappy.com and you will see a couple of tutorials. We are already 15 or 16 tutorials in, depending on when you're watching this video, and there might be a lot more because over the next week we will extend this learning path and we will walk through real world use cases for your application, like authentication, how to implement a sign up, a login, a password reset, a user profile, and how to secure your application against cross site request forgery. And there's a lot more to come. So, Check it out and it's also linked in the description below. Well, so did I mention that you should subscribe to this channel? Okay, so subscribe, give it a like, enjoy coding and make it rock.